I'm Dana Hahn Klein here with Ike Barinholtz for The Oath. Have you secretly been to the holidays at my house? <laughs> <laughs> that is the thing that I hear the most. People see the movie, they're like, you've been watching my family. I see you were here last year. <laughs> yes, you also drank a whole bottle of wine at Thanksgiving and then passed out to <laughs> avoid much. the conversation. Pretty much. Yes. What are holidays like at your house? They're actually pretty lovely. Um, you have a lovely family? <laughs> we have a lovely family. We're all pretty much on the same side. Okay. But two uh, Novembers ago, something happened in the country. I don't know if you heard about it. And after dinner, that after Thanksgiving dinner, my mom and my brother and I got in this huge fight. And we were blaming each other and stuff. And what struck me is that we voted for the same person, rather enthusiastically. And I was just thinking, like, oh, my God, if this is happening at this relatively friendly house, what on earth is going on at other holiday tables? And as I started talking to friends of mine and hearing some of their horror stories, uh, I knew that the landscape of the holiday table in America was changed forever. And I knew it was a very ripe area to uh, satirize. <laughs> what is your favorite Thanksgiving dish? I'm a stuffing man. Okay. And I, I have some, some rules. Uh, first of all, if you put stuffing, if you put raisins in your stuffing, which people do, I, I'm I, I'm not advocating that we reopen Guantanamo Bay. But you're a monster. If you do. But you're a monster, and you don't deserve to be. That was the right answer. No, yes, it's uh, it's insane. Uh, but I make a special stuffing where I take. I have a traditional one with sausage and sourdough, but then I also do one with pastrami and yellow mustard and sauerkraut, and I mix it with rye bread and Swiss cheese, and it tastes like a Reuben. Ike's Reuben stuffing. Check it out. TM. TM. Uh, cranberry from a, a can or like actual cranberries? I do actual cranberries. Okay. I buy because it's so easy. You, you take a bag of cranberries, you put it in a pot with a little bit of pomegranate juice, a little bit of uh, orange or lemon zest, some salt and pepper, and then it cook down. It's easy. It tastes much better than that gelatinous stuff. Anything that holds the shape of its container, and then you can cut into. it's not for me. Yeah. Uh, what would you say the biggest family fight that you'd be willing to share is that has happened at Thanksgiving that is non-politically related? Ooh, uh, in my family, we fight a lot about movies. Um, I'm trying to think of what movie it was, but there was one. What was it? I can't remember. There was something not too long ago that, oh, the movie Gravity. Great movie, right? Loved it. Well, someone in my family, I don't want to say who, mom, hated it. And we got this huge argument at dinner about it, and, and it was getting a little heated. And uh, but it's it, it's the important things, you know. Very. Sandra Bullock movies, yeah. nothing more important. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> <laughs> what do you admire most about your character? Um, I think my character, he, his heart is in the right place, and I think like a lot of people, he's very perturbed by what's happening in the country and very consumed. Um, so I think his heart is in the right place. Um, but it was important to me to not make like a, just an overtly partisan film. And so my challenge was to take this guy who I'm politically aligned with and we agree on things and, um, but make him insufferable and make him just a, kind of a jerk. So, you know, I, I think I kind of, you know, show you, uh, kind of all sides of the spectrum, warts and all. Logistically or emotionally, what was the most challenging scene? The, the Thanksgiving dinner was one that I, I knew was a very important scene. And I was worried about it just because it was, it was like 12 pages, very long scene, and, and a lot of different people talking and very reliant on cues. So that was the one that I was like expecting to be like just a, a behemoth. <clears throat> and my cast came to the table, and they were so well prepared, and rehearsed. they took it upon themselves to go into a room and run the scene over and over and over again. That by the time we got there and started shooting, it just it was sparks, it was electrical, and so that was the one I was the most worried about. But it it just it just came out really well. I think. What is the hardest part about directing yourself? And what is the hardest part about directing your brother? Ooh. Um, Seth Rogen gave me a good advice. Uh, he's like, uh, make sure when you're directing yourself that you give yourself more takes than everyone else because you're outside your mind. And in your mind, you're like, oh, I got it, but you don't have it. So give yourself more space. And then directing my brother, you know, uh, I knew that I could push him and we have so much history that we can get some real emotion and stuff. So uh, I, knew, uh, I knew that was going to be fun, but it's just tough. To, to be mean to your brother because I love him. He's so cute and so sweet and stuff. And just to like scream at him, be like, hey man, focus. That <laughs> was, was a little tough. If you had to hold a political office, what would it be? I mean, I can't think of anything more fun than mayor of Chicago. <laughs> it's like a fun, I think it would be fun. I, I just always have been uh, very amused by Chicago mayors, but I would probably end up in jail. 
So, um, in a great history, continued yeah, history yeah, of Chicago Bears. Yes, yes. You're uh, just fulfilling the, the position. I, 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 I'm going to go ahead and say uh, governor of California. I love Jerry Brown, and, and uh, it's, it's, you know, California is its own country, and uh, I think, you know, you get to kind of see all parts of it and stuff. So I'd say, say governor of California. I'm coming for your job, Jerry. I think he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's shaking in his boots right now. He is so yeah. scared. He's like, oh my God, I'm going to see this tiny little interview. I'm out, I'm out, run. Uh, well, okay, so on the flip side, if or when Western civilization dissolves. Yes. Because, you know. It's possibly. Let me, let me check Twitter. Yep. Let me check Twitter. Yep. Is it happening yet? Uh, if there's like a purge scenario, what is your plan? Fight or flight? Ooh, good question. Uh, I'm going to fight. Okay. Yeah, I mean. Flight's good, but then you're just going to end up in another country missing America, I think. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight. And I might lose, but at least I can say, I, when I'm in the gulag, I can say, I, I fought the good fight. And they'll go, shut up! And I'll go, sorry. sorry. I was the governor of California. I was governor of California. You can't put me in here. And they're like, Whoosh. Weapon of choice. Humor. I was really hoping you'd say that. I was like, he's going to say words. <laughs> Humor. Jokes, because honestly... That is kind of our currency these days. People like me, I feel like you're looking at what's going on, it's so crazy. The best thing you can do is make fun of it. So that's what I try to do a little bit. That's what I try to do with this bad boy. Speaking of making fun of it, like the world we live in is so absurd already and so pushed. So how do you prevent yourself from becoming like too much of a caricature? Um, you know, absurd is the perfect word. Um, I think it is trying to strike that balance. I think it's important for us to be plugged in and to, you know, be very in tune to what's happening and, and upset and, and outraged and stuff. But at the same time, it is good to occasionally hit the pause button and unplug for a moment and take solace in some of those things that we do love, like movies and food and family and TV and books and art, and and trying to strike that balance so you're not just the guy or the person who's like, can you believe it? Can you believe it? You have to try to find a little bit of happiness. Because why, why focus on something that you hate when you could also focus a little bit on something that you love. How do you define success now versus earlier in your career? Uh, well, success earlier in my career was just about having enough money to eat. <laughs> so, so you know, I think when you're first starting out as an actor, you, you, you'll pretty much do anything. And, and now, um, after having done a lot, um, now really, uh, for me, success is being able to tell stories that, that are personal to me that I think are... are um, relevant to today's society and have a relatability to people and just like you said like you watch my thanksgiving like that's my the greatest compliment for me is that people are like oh my god i'm connecting with this this thing that existed in your mind and so if i can keep doing that and keep telling you know weird stories that we haven't hopefully seen before and, and having people relate to them that that's that's success to me growing up who was your favorite fictional character favorite fictional character i loved clark griswold in the vacation films um, just because he reminded me of my dad not so much now um, so, so, so that, that, that's, that's a, that's a pretty, uh, that, that was a pretty, pretty good one. Who are some of your role models? Aside from maybe Clark Griswold. Uh, aside from Clark Griswold. Um, you know, uh, I, 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 I do love Barack Obama. Um, but like personal role models for me, especially, um, are, you know, everyone from, you know, uh, Mindy Kaling, who's someone who just has just worked so hard and been so kind and, and really brought so much joy uh, uh, to people. Um, but the people who inspire me, and that sounds so cheesy and I apologize, are just the people I talk to every day. And I know that sounds really lame, but um, when I go and I meet someone and and uh, I just see them working hard, like it, it reminds me like this is what America is and, and, and why I am so proud to be an American and why I am so Despite everything that's going on right now, I am optimistic about this country because I see you. I see you people working your asses off and, and trying your best to keep your families together and to keep food in their mouths. And that, to me, are the people that, that I just, like, I, they inspire me and they make me want to tell stories for them. Last question is, what's one thing you wish you had more time for? One thing I wish I had more time for... Um, I, 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 you know, I do have to just because I've been traveling so much. I wish I had more time for family. Um, that's not a very funny answer. So I'm going to go ahead and say I wish I had more time to cook because I love cooking. And I, I used to do it like five, six times a week. But now it's kind of like you know, once a week. And it's just like I made pasta sauce. Hurry and eat. <laughs> but uh, I really that's why I love Thanksgiving so much is because my mom and I spent like three days like planning everything and cooking and it really is cathartic and you put on some music or a podcast and it's perfect. 
Well, thanks so much. Congrats Thank you so much for talking to me. I really appreciate no, it. I appreciate it. <laughs> no, I do. No, I do. No, me.